Um, so today we're just going to kind of go through um, kind of on a mid-level release notes on what's new in PowerML 2023. So just a quick intro of myself uh, for those of you that do not know me. Um, I did do a webinar last week, so maybe there are some repeat registrants that were in last Thursday's uh, Fusion 360 webinar. Uh, today we're doing PowerML 2023. So just a, a real quick introduction of where I came from. So funny enough, I actually went to school for architecture. And when I graduated, um, I had a real difficult time kind of finding um, some work in that field. So I ended up working at a local tool and mold shop that um, somebody referred me to, um, thinking I would start working in the design side of things. Um, I ended up working in the machining side. So once I started working in the machine side, I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed making things or seeing how things were, were, were created. So I started in that field as a, basically an operator and moved my way up into a programmer and moved my way up into a full five axis simultation, uh, simultaneous um, programmer using uh, PowerMill and some other CAM systems. Um, from there, I ended up working directly at Dell CAM and uh, moved over to Autodesk during the acquisition. Okay, so uh, before we get going, I just need to display our standard safe harbor statement. Uh, now, today's presentation will focus on functionality that has already been included in this release of PowerMill, but I may mention some ongoing development that may be included in future releases. Probably not, but just in case. Um, where possible, I will make this clear, but please note that things can change, meaning features may be uh, delayed, possibly indefinitely. So just, just want to make sure that you guys are all aware of that. So I thought I would do something a little bit different today in this agenda where I'll go through a quick tips and tricks session, um, you know, just to kind of show you some, some things that you might not be aware of in PowerMill, but you might already be aware of them, but I'll figure I'd go through them anyway. Uh, and then we'll go through what's new in PowerMill for 2023, and then I'll hang back for any Q&A that you might have. So if you can, please just hold on those uh, questions till the very end of the presentation. Thank you. So for this uh, first tips and tricks uh, portion of this presentation, I figured I would just kind of look at a few items here where uh, we can basically control or manipulate how we want to rotate our view in PowerMill. So if I want to rotate around a specific axis, we'll cover that. Um, drilling on an angled face. Uh, so we may want to create a small flat on the part for drilling so the tool does not wander while drilling. Um, I'll show you how an option to do this by splitting the selected hole feature. Uh, it's a very useful tool that a lot of users don't know it's there. I'll also show you some options for capping model openings so your tool can machine directly over top. And lastly, a handy option to machine faces in a three axis format using uh, a SWARF toolpath. So with that being said, I'm gonna jump into uh, PowerMill directly here. Okay, so this is the model that we're gonna look at here. So the first tip I'm gonna show you is, you know, rotating the model around the graphics screen uh, around a specific axis. So we all know that if I hold my center mouse button with my mouse, I can rotate the model and manipulate it you know, 360 degrees uh, in any direction. But there are some times where I wanna rotate around a specific axis. So if I look at this from a top view and maybe I'm doing some three plus one machining and I'm gonna create a work plane off of a view, I might wanna rotate in this case around the X axis. So to do this, we need to hold down a couple of keys on our keyboard. One is the shift button, the other is the alt. And unfortunately, when we do hold the alt button down, we are gonna see these hot keys that appear uh, in a ribbon. That's okay, we can ignore these. But if I wanna rotate around the X axis, if, if you have a three button mouse, which I'm assuming you all do, uh, you're gonna have your left mouse, your center mouse wheel, and then your right, right mouse button. If I hold the left mouse button, that's gonna manipulate my view around the X axis. So I can't rotate around the Y or the Z. So that's only gonna move the model around the X axis. That's the same for the Y axis. So if I, again, if I hold the shift button down and the alt button down and I hold the center mouse button wheel down and I move it back and forth or up and down in my view, that's gonna rotate the model in a Y axis. And then same thing for the X. So if I look at this in a top view and I wanna rotate the model around in the X axis, or sorry, the Z axis, I would hold those same two buttons down, which are the shift and alt key, and then hold my right mouse button down 
And if I drag my mouse pointer up and down graphically, it's gonna rotate the model around the Z axis. So again, really handy tips for those of you that are doing any three plus one machining, because again, if I create my view and I wanna create a work plane, I can always create a work plane off of a view. So creating a work plane and sorry, let's create a work plane and then we're gonna line it to a view like so. So now I've got my work plane. If I need to jump back into that view, right click, activate that work plane, look at it from a top view. Oops, I can activate it first. Activate it. And now we're in that view, so I can do any machining on that, that axis or that fourth axis. Okay, so that um, takes care of tips and trick number one. Um, the second tips and trick I'm going to show you is basically how we can split a whole feature set, uh, in particular this one. So we can see we've got five holes that run through the center of this part, four on the outside, and then one that goes right through um, the part itself. Um, if we wanted to drill this, it might be something we want to do, if I kind of look at it from a side view, um, instead of drilling it directly, you might want to do a little spot base on this hole first. So in order to do this, what we're going to do is just create a standard hole feature. So I'm going to select that geometry. I'm going to create hole feature. And I'm just going to leave the options as is here. So I'm creating the hole feature from the model. Um, compound holes are on. I'm going to hit apply. And there is our hole feature. Now, unfortunately, I mean, we could manually create a helical operation and then guesstimate the depth as to that, that whole feature depth that we need to create that spot face on. But there is a function here. If I select that whole feature and I right click and I want to edit that feature set, if I look down this menu and go to the edit side, there's another sub menu that kind of appears on the right hand side. There is an option here to split at the surface. So the whole feature set will automatically split itself at the nearest intersection or the lowest point of where that model breaks through. So here we go, we can see this line here that appears. So now if I wanna create some kind of a drilling operation, or in this case, a helical drilling operation, I'm just gonna go ahead and quickly create a new tool, not a ball nose tool. Let's go create an end mill. And I believe that's a quarter inch hole. Let's go 1875 or 3 16 Just gonna go ahead and hit close on that. Let's go create a drilling tool path. I'm gonna to create a helical operation. And I'm going to select that feature set. And instead of drilling through all of the components on this hole, since it is now a compound hole, I'm going to select a range and I'm going to drill from the top of hole component number one. And I'm going to drill, even though we're going to do a helical operation, to the bottom of hole component number one. I'm going to put pitch value in here for step down. And maybe I want to start just slightly over top of that hole. Okay, so there's my helical operation. It automatically stops at where that hole's been split. So very useful function, especially if you're doing, you know, core pins or any type of, you know, breakthrough on the part that you need to be very careful with that the drill does not wander through when, while you're drilling. Okay, so on that note, you can see in this model, we've got uh, a pocket opening on the part. And if you look very carefully, we also see that there's an issue here with uh, a breakthrough or like a missing surface, which might have happened during translation or even could have possibly happened if I accidentally removed something off this model. So if I created a tool path that basically cut over top of this part, I'm just going to create a quick ball nose tool like so. Let's do a quick raster finishing toolpath. And I'm just going to create the block based off of select all. Oops. Okay, let's create this model like so. And we're just going to raster over it at zero degrees. Let's go two way. And 
I'm just going to leave this step over as we see it. Now, before I go even that further, I'm going to create a, a boundary. So in this case, maybe just a, a simple user defined boundary. Sorry, user defined boundary. I'm going to select that face, accept. And I'm also going to remove that pocket as well as that part of the boundary. So I just have this boundary that's uh, kind of localizing on the top of this part as we see here. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit calculate. And obviously we're gonna have some issues where uh, this tool wants to fall within that hole opening and it also wants to fall within this pocket region. So there's a few different um, options here for a PowerMill user. Um, if you're on subscription, you have um, Fusion 360. Um, if you have PowerMill Ultimate, which I'm using right now, we also get uh, a counterpart of PowerMill, which is PowerMill modeling. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to bring this surface in. I'm gonna select this surface and I already have PowerMill modeling open. I'm gonna select this surface, right click on it, and I'm gonna select surface modeling. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna bring this surface directly into PowerMill modeling for me. Just give it a second here. While that's uh, being loaded in, it's just opening up PowerMill modeling on the side for me. Um, I thought I had it open, but I, it looks like I doesn't, I don't. So. I can also do this in Fusion 360. So if I exported that model from PowerMill, um, perhaps I don't have the luxury of having somebody to, to fix this for me. I can always export it. If I have PowerMill standard, which you get a seat of uh, Fusion 360 as well, I can always export it, import this into Fusion 360, and we can go into the surfacing side. And quick and easily, I can create a patch surface. I'm just gonna create this boundary edge now. There is an option here to enable chaining, which is on. So it's just gonna automatically chain that top geometry and it's gonna create that uh, surface over top for me. So that's number one. Uh, for this missing surface, it's a little bit more complicated uh, just because of the geometry on this, this top fillet. So let's zoom in here. Probably not a bad idea to create a sketch. So I'm gonna create a sketch and I'm gonna make sure I got 3D sketch turned on. And during that sketch, I'm going to make sure I use include 3D geometry. So I'm gonna basically take this and this. And kind of lost that uh, command window here. So let me just hit escape, okay. And then I'm going to create a couple splines, just the trace this, and it doesn't have to be too, too accurate if I'm just filling in the surface. Hit escape once, and I'll do the same thing once again on the bottom. So basically I wanna have you know, four pieces of geometry that make out that opening, like so. Let's finish that sketch. I'm actually gonna undraw that body real quick. And let's go back into creating, instead of creating a patch surface, which I probably could, in this case, I'm gonna create a lofted surface. So I'm gonna grab basically the two outside. And then my, for my rails, I'm gonna grab these two splines that I've created and we're gonna hit okay. So I can't see it because I've got the body turned off, but there's that new surface that I just created in Fusion as well as this surface here as well. So then I can always just export it once again, uh, export it onto my desktop or whatever I need to as whatever type of file type and then re-import it back into PowerMill. So this is something that we might wanna do upfront before we start machining. Um, so this is the fusion option if you don't have PowerMill modeling, but if you have PowerMill modeling, you know, once I bring that surface in, it's kind of the same concept. You know, I'm going to create a, uh, a patch surface. So let's go to surface, smart surfacer. I'm just going to grab this edge. It's going to create a fill in surface for me tangent to those surfaces. I'm going to hit apply. And I can also do the same thing if I wanted to fill in that area as well and okay. If I'm happy with these changes, I'm just gonna hit the green checkbox to go back into PowerMill. And then I'm, all I'm gonna do now is just edit. I'm gonna make this toolpath invalid and then I'm gonna recalculate this toolpath. 
So now we'll see that tool path simply goes right over top of those two openings. Um, on the side note, um, if I wanted to create uh, that, or I want to fix that surface in PowerMill modeling here as well, I'm just going to take the surrounding surfaces like so. Go back to surface modeling. It should bring these surfaces in uh, fairly quick this time. Okay, there we are. Uh, so one thing you'll notice that uh, when we go into PowerMill modeling from PowerMill, it's not a bad idea to turn on the views toolbar and let's change this to shaded with edges. And I'm gonna go back to the smart surfacer as we did here before. And I'm just gonna grab that edge. Let's grab this edge. So you have tangential. You can also grab this edge and this edge, but you'll notice that depending on what we grab, we're gonna get different results. So it's not a bad idea. I must have accidentally selected something here. Okay, let's escape out of that. It's not a bad idea to, when I'm in the smart surfacer, I'm gonna use the comp curve function to basically create a bounding area that I want that surface to be. Let's go ahead and save that. Let's do this once more. Smart surfacer. Huh, interesting. Okay. Let's do this. Uh, well, this is, you know what, I'm just going to move on. Um, you can see how we did it in Fusion. I mean, if, uh, if we have some time, I'll go back to this at the end of the presentation. I don't want to spend too much time on this. So let's just X out of this. Okay, so the last uh, tip and trick we were going to discuss is um, in PowerMill, if I wanted to create a real simple tool path, um, in this case, maybe I just want to take an end mill and remove some material off this face. So traditionally, what we might do is create a, a curve of some sort, and then we might do a 2D curve profile toolpath. So that's that's quite a bit of time for me to go in, sketch a curve, uh, create the toolpath, where I just really want that tool to machine this front of this face by a certain amount, that certain value. So a lot of people look at a SWARF toolpath and look at the preview icon and kind of think right away that this toolpath I can't use unless I'm doing this type of complex work, blisks and blades um, in particular. So what we could do is use this strategy, SWARF finishing. And I just need to select this face that I wanted this end mill to basically machine against. I'm gonna select this face. Uh, one other thing I may wanna do is just make sure that I can machine outside of the block. And I can also change the position so that I want this tool path to cut from the top of that selected surface. And maybe I want to offset it down, you know, three eighths of an inch. Okay, so there's my tool path. If I wanted to even drop it down a little bit more, well, I did 375, I meant to do three eighths minus 0.375. Hit calculate once again. And we can see this tool path segment there at the bottom. It just allows me to quickly create a quick tool path, simulate this from start. And obviously we can adjust the leads and links if required. I'm just simply gonna do a quick witness on here so that maybe I need to flip the part over, do second operation, I have something that I can, I can pick up off of. Now, the biggest thing to um, remember here is that if I only have three axis capabilities, um, a SWARF strategy automatically goes into full five axis because what it wants to do is lay the end mill against whatever ruled surfaces that we select. Even though these are up and down vertically, we still need to be very specific with PowerMill because we're giving PowerMill freedom to move its tool axis whenever it needs to. So if we want to keep this strictly three axis, if we're using PowerMill standard, we can also do this as well. But we need to, before we calculate this tool path, we need to make sure that the tool axis is set to vertical. So that will make sure that this tool path is a three axis tool path, even when we post out. So if I only have three axis capabilities on my post and this is set to automatic, I might get some warnings uh, during the post processing that um, I don't have five axis capabilities. So those are just a few uh, tips and tricks here I wanted to kind of go through. Uh, these are some tools that maybe you're not use, using at this point in time. Um, 
if you have any more questions regarding this, we can always answer them at the end. Uh, just make sure you ask me before the presentation is done. So that being said, I'm going to jump back into the, uh, the, the slideshow here and kind of go through the rest of uh, what's new in 2023. Okay. So what's new in this release? So we can see that multiple speed improvements, speed and performance improvements have been um, entered into 2023. New options to optimize the machining of open pockets when using steep and shallow with 3D offset style machining. Safer leads and links, two new options. One trim path trims the tool path to accommodate safer lead moves. And the other one extends leads to safely machine undercut regions. So you can kind of see from this image here, uh, using a lollipop tool, basically machining the undercut of this, this opening here. Um, traditionally, what would happen is the tool would retract and maybe cause some collisions. There's some new enhancements to the undercuts regions and uh, leads and links to eliminate that. Enhanced setups, so more intuitive work plane behavior and new default options for machine types and model locations. More consistent tool axis tilting when using automatic collision avoidance. And um, as you can see, there's been an update to the, uh, the branding as well as a bunch of uh, quality of life improvements, which we'll, we'll kind of look at. So let's kind of start with uh, speed and performance. So during the 2019 release year, uh, we talked to a lot of users and the common theme was that um, as these versions were being released, they're much slower than the previous version. And uh, customers kind of wanted the quickness of the benchmark version was like 2016. So one of the main reasons for this were the fact that a lot of new safety enhancements were written into the software, which in turn took longer to open existing projects, write tool paths, and uh, collision check these tool paths. So development has listened to these complaints and have been trying to make each new version of Paramo quicker than the last. So back in 2020, uh, the Paramo speed improvements were increased to be one of the quickest versions to date. And each version since 2020 seems to be outdoing the last. So 2023, no exception to that rule. It's uh, the quickest version that has been released uh, thus far. So speed and performance, continuing the theme, Paramount 2023 includes the usual collection of speed ups and performance improvements that will have a big impact on daily, daily user experiences. So the option to select automatic as the chosen type of collision checking was added to Paramount a number of years back in, this, in the years that have passed since, uh, we've continued to improve the speed and reliability of imp the important piece of code that was introduced. Parmel 2023 sees this continuation with another improvement of roughly 15%. Curve projection finishing now makes better use of multi-threading and multi-core technologies, resulting up to about 40% of calculation times. Spaster, or sorry, faster spun profile calculation. The ability to calculate the spun profile in your 3D models has been sped up with our uh, tests showing improvements of up to about 60%. Finally, and still on the subject, speed panel 2023 is faster at opening and saving projects that contain tool paths that have been collision checked. So that was a, a large issue in previous versions. It just seemed like uh, projects would take uh, qu quite a long time, uh, quite a long time to open up and even hang in some instances. So the benefits of these are improvements should mean all of you sp spend less time waiting for Paramount to complete tasks. Um, but just, just so you're aware, the exact amount of time saved will vary based on uh, the types of part you machine and the strategies that you use. So developers um, have been testing this using this system, which is I think pad P71 workstation. Um, you can see it's using a, a Xenon Intel processor, 3.1 gigahertz processor, 64 gigs of RAM, as well as an NVIDIA Quadro P4000 graphics card. So on that note, I did a few tests myself with my laptop, which is the Lenovo ThinkPad P1 with an Intel i7 chip, 32 gigs of RAM, and a Quadro T2000 graphics card. So comparable anyway. So one of the uh, 
speed improvements that we talked about previously is the curve projection finishing toolpath. So we can see here the times that development found were roughly 22.8 or 23 seconds to calculate in 2022.1.1, the last version of 2022. In 2023, the same calculation took about 15 seconds. So saving about 33% um, of time or a difference of 7.6 or roughly seven and a half seconds. So I calculated the same toolpath on my system and I found pretty comparable results. So just under 22 seconds, 21.8 seconds, uh, took me in 23, just over 13 seconds, saving about 8.7 seconds or 40% quicker. So again, um, the way the development is testing this is they've got a bunch of processes running in the background along with power mill. Um, I'm not sure what processes I've ha I had. So there could be a little bit difference there uh, depending on what processes we're running. So roughly uh, comparable to what development is, is seeing. So the spun profile, just under 21 seconds in 2022, um, just under 10 seconds or eight seconds in 2023, saving about 12 and a half seconds or 61% uh, time differences. So I did this on mine. Again, I'm getting just under 20 seconds when I calculate this in 2022, just over 10 seconds in 2023. So that you can see there's a slight two and a half second time difference between the developer's laptop and my laptop. But all in all, I'm getting about a savings of about 50% or 46% to be exact. So um, speaking of comparisons between steep and shallow with the automatic collision avoidance, unfortunately, I didn't have this exact model or project to test this on. But you can kind of see overall 2023 seeing about a 3% increase in time or 42 seconds uh, overall. So it's a rather large toolpath that was calculated on this uh, larger model. So I calculated um, uh, on one of the models that I had in a specific region. I didn't want to spend um, a lot of time calculating this toolpath. So it took me about 27 seconds in 2022, 24 seconds in 2023, and uh, saving me about 10 seconds, or sorry, 10%, or just under three seconds. So all in all, you can see that we're still getting some really good gains in 2023 uh, across the board. But these are three specific region uh, reasons um, as 23 is uh, quicker than 2022.1.1. <coughs> Excuse me. So steep and shallow. So in addition to these speed ups, Power Mill 2023 includes numerous usability and quality of life enhancements, starting with steep and shallow. So 23 steep and shallow includes a new option to control the shape of the toolpath that is generated for shallow regions. When using steep and shallow on the shallow option and the type of set, the 3D offset. So on previous releases of PowerMill, all shallow regions would be machined with a series of concentric offsets. So you can kind of see uh, in the top video that's playing, and this is in 2022, you can see uh, closed offsets. In 2023, down below, you can see that we've got the option of choosing open offsets. So there's a little checkbox in the tool platform that allows you to uh, manipulate this from closed offsets to open offsets. So uh, the benefits of this has numerous positive impacts. Firstly, these kind of offsets tend to have fewer changes of direction, resulting in uh, reduced likelihood of witness marks being left on the machine part. Secondly, the offsets allow the cutting tool to approach the pocket from the outside, which can reduce tool wear and prolong cutter life. Next, we have some new leads and links improvements. So I kind of already discussed this uh, a couple seconds ago. Excuse me for just one second here, guys. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. So, um, say for leads and links. Uh, leads and links are an integral part of a toolpath calculation and allows us to control how the tool engages into and exit from the stock that we're, we're machining. So, Paramount 23 sees an inclusion of two major improvements here. 
So one, uh, we can automatically trim toolpaths to accommodate a safe lead. So previously in cases where a toolpath machines, one feature or surface, but comes very close to a neighboring region, Paramo would fail to apply a lead in or lead out move. This is for, for safety. So if it can't simply apply that lead in or lead out move, um, it will just put a safer um, transition between the first segment and the next segment. So most likely it could be an on segment, could be a skin move, or it even could be a safe move. Okay, so if we look uh, closely here, we can see in the yellow circle, uh, the, the leads and links have been appropriately applied because there's no obstructions in a way. Whereas in the red and black circles there, you can see how the, the segments have been eliminated or the lead and lead, lead and links segments have been eliminated simply because uh, we could possibly damage the part because it would be, uh, cause some kind of a gouge. So this could be fixed mainly by trimming the toolpath back to make more space for a safe lead and move to be applied. But this could take some time because we're exiting out, we're maybe creating a boundary, or we're just manually trimming this back. We're in 2023. There's a new option to automatically trim those segments back in the leads and links form. So this is showing it in the toolpath form, but you can also do this outside of the toolpath calculation directly in the leads and links form. Uh, in one of the editing options. <clears throat> okay, so now if we calculate the same toolpath in 2023 using that function, you can kind of see all the leads and links have been appropriately applied in those same regions. Uh, but one thing to keep in mind is that, you know, we might have to go into the subsequent toolpaths to get that stock out since we're trimming back that toolpath to an ex uh, expected amount. as you can see here. Okay, so continue on with safer leads and links. Uh, the second improvement relates to the machining of undercuts or overhangs. The previous releases of Paramol, if the chosen leader lead in or lead out move cannot be applied, the default lead would be applied. This could result in a toolpath containing vertical moves in or out of the part, which could cause the tool to collide with the part. <clears throat> to fix this, we could be playing around with different options just to safely bring that tool out of that region. So Panama 2023 now recognizes this hazard and uses a logical process to automatically ex add extended lead moves to allow the cutting tool to safely engage and withdraw from the part without colliding. So again, both of these enhancements greatly reduce the risk of collision or gouges occurring, resulting in a better machining outcome. There's also an impact on CAM programming times as the commands automate in the manual process that could be very time consuming. So you can see here, the, the linking move would potentially come straight out, causing a gouge. In 2023, there's some added extension moves which would pull the tool away from the model and retract um, out of the model if required. So let's uh, talk about enhanced setups. So the concept of setups appeared in PowerMole a number of years ago. Uh, these aim to help organize the machining of parts that require more than one machining configuration or setup. So the latest release of PowerMole includes multiple enhancements to the way setups work. <clears throat> when a setup is active, its work plane is now automatically active as well. When you create a toolpath on a setup, the setup's work plane is no longer automatically activated for the toolpath. Instead, by default, the toolpath now uses the current active work plane. When creating an NC program from the setup, setup's work plane is now automatically activated as the output work plane as well. So new default settings. It is now possible to define default settings for both model location and machine tool for each setup. These selections are then inherited to the other areas such as tool paths, simulation, and NC programs, automating the previous manually selected options. In addition, setups can now have their own default thickness settings. So you can see in that little video that's playing, there isn't a separate page now for default thicknesses. <clears throat> Previously, thicknesses were set globally to the entire project or to each tool path, you know, from the home tab or within each tool path itself. 
so again, uh, the benefits, improve workplace behavior and new default settings, reduce the risk of human error uh, as fewer parameters and settings have to be managed by the programmer itself. This also reduces CAM programming time. Okay, so improve uh, toolbox's tilting. So automatic collision avoidance. We saw earlier how the automatic collision avoidance code in PowerML has been sped up. In addition to speed, the code now produces more consistent levels of tool axis tilting across successive tool path segments. Um, looking at the example below, here we can see the constant Z finishing with a tool axis set to vertical. The machine is part with the ball nose tool. The, the tool tip is quite short. As the tool path works its way down the part, PowerMill correctly spots the risk of collision and starts tilting the tool path away to avoid collisions. By the time the tool has reached the bottom of the feature, the amount of tool axis tilting has steadily increased over that time, meaning the cutting conditions are quite different for those seen at the top of the part to the bottom of the part. <clears throat> Factors like tool runout, cutter push off, and using different points of contact on the tool profile all increase the likelihood that the surface finish will vary across the machine part. In PowerMill 2023, improvements on this are applied by applying a more consistent amount of tool axis tilting across neighboring tool path segments. The benefits of this are the net effect here show more consistent levels of surface finish with less likelihood of brand, bands or steps appearing on the part that can be seen or felt. So another thing you might have noticed is <clears throat> the new branding uh, that PowerMill has, has gone through. So the last uh, four or five versions, we've had that same PowerMill icon. Uh, it made things difficult to you know, determine if I was maybe working in PowerMill or PowerShape, um, which caused some frustration even for myself, but for a lot of end users. So uh, Autos decided to do a whole rebranding process, um, not just with PowerMill, but across the board. So you're gonna see now when you install 2023, the new branding here is shown with uh, the orange icon and the, the mill designating that this is uh, indeed power mill. So some other new uh, features. So there are some background commands that can be typed in that will help you automatically find flats for three plus two machining. <clears throat> so PowerMill already had a number of toolpath and boundary types that can use the machine planar flat surfaces. Uh, these worked well when the planar surfaces are perpendicular to tool axis, but as part of an ongoing project to help automate the machining of inclined planar surfaces, PowerMill 2023 now includes a couple of type commands. The first command selects all planar surfaces where the surface normal falls within a user-defined angular range. By default, user values are set to zero and 90 degrees, but they can be changed, meaning you have the ability to target specific surfaces. The second command creates work planes for each z-axis aligned with the surface normal of the planar surfaces. Um, this is useful for three plus two machining because um, if I don't have full five axis, I need to break this up into multiple tool paths. The full intention here is that these commands would typically be used in a macro or add-in to automate the process of selecting and machining planar surfaces using three plus two machining. Okay, some miscellaneous other options that have been added in PowerMill 2023. Um, approved accuracy of new rest finishing strategy. So in PowerMill 2022.1, there was a new strategy, which I'm just going to kind of jump back into PowerMill real quick and show you where this is in case you're not aware. But if you go to the home tab and you go to your strategy selector under finishing, kind of drop this all the way down. There's a new rest finishing, which is under preview. This was released in 2022.1. Um, this rest finishing um, is just an enhanced option of using standard uh, uh, sorry, corner finishing. So it just gives you different results, um, kind of using the same options as you would find in steep and shallow. 
So that is still in preview, as you can see in parentheses. So the rest finishing toolpath was added for machining areas such as corners, which have remaining stock left over by previous operations. Power Mill 2023, the strategy, while it's still in preview, has been improved and now produces toolpaths more reliable that cover the full extent of the rest material with smoother passes of improved quality. Let me just kind of go back to the slideshow here. <clears throat> okay. So a few other um, details here on 2023. The one that uh, may be interesting to yourself is better quality of corner finishing toolpaths, kind of working back on that new rest finishing strategy. Uh, we already talked about the spun profile accuracy and the new company branding and product logos. So with that, I'm gonna open this up to any uh, questions that you, you all might have. I can see that there are a bunch in the chat. So let me just kind of open up my chat here. Okay, so let's see if there's any questions here. We do have a question in the Q&A tab. Can you see okay. that one? Uh, let me see, Q&A, yes, open this up. <clears throat> okay. So it looks like the question from Eric is uh, shift plus alt plus left mouse button rotates around X, Y uh, with the center button? I think they're just asking, is that is that correct? Yeah, so shift plus alt plus left mouse button rotates around the X, where shift plus alt and center mouse button rotates around the Y axis. So if you kind of think of X, Y, Z, your mouse buttons would be X, left mouse button, Y, center mouse button, and Z, right mouse button. So hopefully that answers your question. Perfect. <clears throat>